Y'all give it up for Joe Dante. How you holding up? I'm still here. Uh, hard, it is, hard as it is for me to believe, I have known Mark Goldblatt for over 40 years. And like other people in this room, we both got our start working for Roger Corman at New World Pictures one of the few places at that time where young people with drive but no experience could work on real movies that actually got released. We're all familiar with the long list of names who went from zero to 60 through Roger Corman, many of whom, like Mark, went to the top of their class. Uh, what first bonded Mark and I, as well as the others in our circle, was our love for the movies and the moving image. All kinds, all genres, We'd work all day cutting trailers and promos, and then we'd go home and we'd watch 16 millimeter prints all night. The Lubitsch pictures and the Ford pictures and the Cuckoo Girl pictures and the Hitchcock pictures that we watched were a far cry from the candy stripe nurse drive-in fare that we were selling, but inspiring nonetheless. So when Roger uh, allowed Alan Arkish and I to co-direct a spoof of one of those pictures, Mark Goldblatt signed on as a production assistant. And we all know that a production assistant does many things. He even did a little editing. And he's even in the movie on screen, briefly, as third Filipino assailant on the right. <laughs> Actually, they were more than assailants in this picture, but it was a different time. This did not lead to an acting career, by the way. When I got to edit Ron Howard's debut feature, Grand Theft Auto, uh, I asked Mark to be the associate editor, uh, since I didn't know the front end of a Buick from a tailpipe of an Oldsmobile. And, uh, you know, an associate editor, as you know, is distinct from an additional editor. The additional editor is often someone who's brought in to clean up the mess. And Mark has done that on numerous occasions. When I went to Texas to direct my first solo movie, Piranha, uh, I, uh, I, I co-edited it with Mark, and uh, Mark, of course, was cutting back in LA. And because it was a low-budget movie, we couldn't run dailies there in Texas. So I would call Mark in LA to find out how things were going. And this was where I first encountered his perfectionist streak. I'd say, so how's it looking? And he'd say, I don't know, Joe, you know, can't you get them to talk faster? Or maybe get some more shots of the blood in the water or whatever? I was so worried that I, I, finally I wouldn't leave the editing room to attend my own rap party. But Mark told me it was great. So then we cut the howling together and Mark did several more movies in a similar vein until he hooked up with Jim Cameron, another Roger Corman alumnus, to do The Terminator. Then, all of a sudden, he was in the big leagues. One high-profile picture after another. Some of them now considered classics. And since many required long post schedules, he was pretty much off the market every time I tried to get him to work with him. But luckily, he did find time to direct two features, one of which, Dead Heat, is actually a very underrated and pretty interesting movie. Uh, and an episode, a werewolf episode of uh, Erie, Indiana, uh, as well as uh, he does some uh, erudite commentaries for Trailers from Hell. Now, I hesitate to trot out that old nicest guy in showbiz malarkey, but it's true. Mark was and is a sweetheart. I've never even heard him raise his voice. And may have another view. Uh, and incidentally, he happens to be a hell of an editor. If it's true that movies are made three times, once in the writing, once in the shooting, and once in the editing, 
Mark has put his transformative stamp on every movie he's ever touched, and as you'll see from this clip reel, his versatility is exceeded only by his craftsmanship. When an individual acquires great power, the use or misuse of that power is everything. Why do you cry? I don't know. You just cry. You know, when it hurts. Will it be for the greater good? Some things aren't meant to be changed. Or will it be used for destructive ends? You know, sometimes when you cage the beast, the beast gets angry. You have no idea. Now, this is a question we must all ask ourselves. Victory belongs to those that believe in it the most, who believe in it the longest. We're going to believe. Come with me if you want to live. I will not kill anyone. Forgive me, Father, for I had sinned. Okay, ladies. I got one interest here, and that's the show. I want to see you dance, and I want to see you smile. I can't use you if you can't smile. I can't use you if you can't show. I can't use you if you can't sell. I don't care whether you live or die. I don't know how much longer I can hold this. Hey, kid. Welcome to the war. Does anyone in this room think that victory is possible without facing danger? Of course there's a risk. We've been trained to think that we're invincible. I know now why you cry. But it's something I can never do. We're on the ropes, gentlemen. But when I see defeat in the eyes of my countrymen, in your eyes right now, we all need to be reminded who we truly are, that we will not give up or give in. We ride together. We die together. Bad boys for life. The United States government just has to save the world. Anybody want to say no? The unknown future rolls toward us. I face it for the first time with a sense of hope. Because if a machine, a Terminator, can learn the value of human life, maybe we can too.
ladies and gentlemen, uh, a man I'm proud to call my friend and I'm proud to be in the same business with, Mark Goldblatt. This for? Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. I can't tell you how proud I am to be here tonight. I want to express my gratitude to the Board of the American Cinema Editors for honoring me with this Career Achievement Award for my body of work, and I guess for my all around nice guyishness as well. <laughs> Thanks especially to President Stephen Rifkin and, of course, to the amazing Jenny McCormick. <laughs> Special thanks also to Esther Sokolow and her team for doing such a great job on this tribute reel. And I want to uh, congratulate Leon Ortiz Gill. Uh, it's amazing that we're here on the same night. In the early 70s, I actually took an editing class that Leon taught at Sherwood Oaks Experimental College, and he taught me things that have stood me in very good stead over the years. So, it's, it's kismet to be honored here alongside of him. Now, I'm probably going to get a little philosophical because I was a philosophy major. Uh, in fact, I might even get a bit metaphysical. So you've been warned. Now, as cinema editors, we have the privilege to work in the greatest art form that I know. What starts as words on a page, we help transform into images and sound that can convey emotions, provoke thought, and affect people the world over. At their best, movies are the result of a massive collaboration with a higher goal than simply to make the best movie possible, and that's to have a great experience that arises from our shared creativity. Team efforts are all about emotional investment. If you're passionate about your work, you're going to make a better picture. When you really feel it, the audience feels it too. So to that end, I say be bold in your editing. Be aggressive. Be fierce and powerful. And never, never be afraid to go to places that directors may not have even thought to go. Because you, know, you never know. It might be exactly where they need to go. Your life experience is something that you bring to the table every time you turn on that machine. You bring your values and your impressions of the world into the editing. Sometimes you think about the cuts. Sometimes you just let them occur. And behold, the film is editing itself. I mean, perhaps there's a greater force that guides us along. The gods of cinema, for those of you so theologically inclined. <laughs> now, I've had a lot of fun collaborating with a variety of innovative filmmakers over the course of my career. And not just the directors, but the producers, the writers, other department heads, studio executives, and of course, my assistants. As Joe indicated, I got my first break as a PA in the mid-70s at Roger Corman's New World Pictures with the largesse of the great John Davison, who was gearing up to produce Hollywood Boulevard, Joe's first solo effort as a director, uh, and Alan Arkish was also directing. There were two directors, no waiting, uh, in, in making Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, I learned a hell of a lot on that picture, even as a PA, because I got to do a little bit of everything, and I made long-lasting friendships, and as Joe has indicated, uh, Alan, John, and Roger and Julie Corman are all here tonight, so we're still in touch. I learned a hell of a lot editing alongside Joe. Talk about passion. Early on, I asked him, what do you want, this is when we first started working together, what do you, how do you want to proceed? Do you want to look at dailies and discuss which takes you like or not? What are your intentions? He said, Mark, are you kidding me? Just make it work. <laughs> so Joe gave me the freedom to make my own editorial choices, and that was invaluable. 
But I'd be remiss without expressing my gratitude to Roger, Roger Corman, for providing the context for young filmmakers like us and so many others to cut our teeth at New World. One of these young filmmakers was Gail Ann Hurd, who you, you saw earlier this evening. We had, uh, we had both worked on a pretty out there movie called Humanoids from the Deep, <laughs> a personal favorite. And she subsequently was developing a low budget time travel thriller with this art department guy from New World by the name of Jim Cameron. <laughs> Amazingly, they wanted me to edit it. Amazing, but they, they, they went for it and so did I. And I'm really grateful that they did. So thank you, Gail. Thank you. <laughs> Few filmmakers are as passionate as James Cameron. He was first on the set and last to leave. I got to work uh, together with him on a couple of other pictures, uh, Terminator 2 and True Lies, both of which I edited with, uh, with Conrad Buff and Richard Harris, a real dream team. Conrad's here somewhere. Uh, there are so many other co-editors that I've worked with over the years, too many to thank individually, but I really value all of those collaborators it's all about the people you work with. Years later, John Davison was producing RoboCop, and Paul Verhoeven needed a second unit director with an editor's eye. I jumped at the opportunity. I loved working with Paul and worked with him as an editor on three subsequent projects. He's a true visionary. Other incredible forces of nature I've been privileged to work with repeatedly over the years include the late George Cosmatos, who became a dear friend, Joel Silver, whom I've always thought of as the P.T. Barnum of action filmmaking. <laughs> Andy Vanya and Mario Kassar, Alan Marshall, and Jerry Bruckheimer and Michael Bay. I treasure my time serving on the boards of the Motion Picture Editors Guild and ACE, ultimately as vice president of ACE under Tom Rolfe, and then as president. It was a great honor to be involved with these vital organizations and to help raise consciousness about editing throughout the world. And this is my, thank you. So in, in this vein, I'm in my 11th year now serving on the Academy Board of Governors, working alongside some of the most brilliant people in the motion picture industry. I've been so fortunate to have been supported by a fantastic team of assistant editors over the years, without whom, my work would not have been nearly as good. I learned from them, and hopefully they learned from me. Many of them have gone on to very successful editing careers of their own, and that thrills me. So, so Kent Beta, Mark Helfrick, Alan Baumgarten, Jim Stewart, Caroline Ross Solberg, Ian Slater, Todd Miller, Roger Barton, Jim May, Christine Kim, Danny Retz, Jason Hellman, Steve Ansell, and Yvonne Valdez, I bow down to you. Thank you for everything. And there have been many others too numerous to mention, but I want to thank my agent Larry Mirish and his associates, Robin Schreer, and Beth Ryder for their sage wisdom and advice over the years. I want to thank my relatives and friends, so many of whom have traveled great distances to be here tonight, and a special shout out to Vanessa Regal. Eternal thanks to my parents, Jack and Lillian, for their unswerving love and support. Thank you, Ann and Max Goldblatt, for the sacrifices you made along the way and for your understanding when it came to, as we've learned a lot tonight, about the long hours and distant locations, which can be pretty grueling on relationships, but you do the best you can and hope that the love is there. And Max, by the way, I think it's pretty wonderful that you've followed in my footsteps and have become a great editor in your own right. You know, it's incumbent upon all of us to work hard to create opportunities for the next generation of film editors. I'm humbled to be part of this community and to, uh, to have fulfilled my commitment to cinema. I thank you so much.
almost forgot it, but I'll take good care of it.